And hello, everyone. Uh, it is uh, Tuesday, the 16th day here of April. Hope you guys are doing well. I'm Wave Meteorologist uh, Brian Good. The 16th of April always rings a bell for me. For those that uh, uh, remember the storm back in the uh, 90s, 1998, in fact, that's when we had one of the larger hell storm events that ever has taken place in the United States in Bowling Green and on the campus of Western Kentucky University in the Nashville had several tornadoes and even an ef5 not too far away just south of nashville that took place but a four came through nashville all at the same exact time i was there on campus at uh, western that happened but always remember april 16th as uh, by far the biggest uh, hell event i've ever witnessed uh where you got uh, softball size a little bit larger that's uh falling uh to where they don't even bounce they just boom, hit the ground and destroyed all the windows so um yeah, it was a mess for that event. One of the costliest ones as well. Uh, hold on one second. Got a spammer here. I got to get rid of. Um, mm-hmm. Let's see. Let's go. See you later. Too early today to do any kind of spamming. All right. So, um, oh, I know why you guys are here. We um, we have the alert day that's still out for, for tomorrow. Now, uh, there has been some changes, and there will be more obviously, but I want to let you know where we are at on this one. This one is not as um, not as clear cut as what April 2nd was like as far as the data and leading up to it and the confidence that built up for it. This one's not that uh, not that easy. Uh, and now there is a chance we'll have to add on another day onto this and I'm referring to Thursday. So uh, very complex setup and I'm explain what we're seeing as the challenges as of now, what we're going to be looking for today and the data that comes in to clarify uh, our forecast so, so we can get everything out to you guys and that you have uh, a better understanding too of uh, what the heck is going on. All right, so let's start with the, uh, well, it's, oh, I like to start with cameras, right? Let's start with the beautiful start starting uh, view of uh, downtown Louisville. This is looking from the harbors in Jeffersonville, looking toward the east. You see a bit of the big four there. Yeah, no, not a lot of sun so far. We've got some mid to high level clouds that have streamed on in and got a little bit of rain on the radar. And I think those of you in Kentucky are going to get some showers if you're not already uh, through the late morning and midday hours. But in an all day rain set up today, no, we're going to get some sun. It will be a warm day. Uh, we'll still get into the 80s, but not as pretty or as awesome as uh, yesterday was when we hit uh, 87 degrees. So kind of a transition day here, it looks like. Right now, we're not far from 70. I mean, can't get much closer, right? We're at 69 degrees here, 69 in Bardstown, 72 down to the south into Marion County. All right, so um, we're going to continue to see some uh, showers roll through. I'm not sure where did that pop up. Apparently, the blog just wants to end. <laughs> we're not ending. I promise. We're not going to end. Uh, it's got gremlins. There's been a lot of gremlins on our computers lately. I think it's Gizmo. It could be Spike. Probably Gizmo. That cuteness. You gotta be careful. All right. Here's the radar. There's the band of showers again that's going to move right across central Kentucky. This is nothing severe, just some light showers around. Uh, if you still want to try to get a mow in today, you've got a narrow window. This is probably not going to mess up the yard too much because it is relatively light as it scoots on by. I don't see much happening for Indiana. So this is mainly a Kentucky little way between now and about 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock. It'll scoot on by. Uh, we will get another one, but I think that one's going to be closer to 7 o'clock tonight before we have another batch of showers roll through the area. Otherwise, we'll have a mix of sun and clouds combination here today. Not Again, not, not a perfectly blue sky, but not overcast all day either. It's kind of back and forth. Okay, so there is one little piece. Can't really see it. It'll be roughly right here. This will be the one that should pass through about 7 o'clock. This evening, a little wave of showers. Otherwise, your main show today is obviously back here into Illinois and into Missouri, where they're going to get the brunt of the severe weather for really the entire event of the week. They're going to get the brunt of that uh, with a very large area. I mean, look at that. The entire state of Missouri and looks like all of Illinois as well is under a severe risk and uh, either a level two or three uh, showing up. So very busy for St. Louis and our friends to the West. I know it looks weird how it, drapes the, the marginal risk right over into West Virginia. Some of this is actually the warm front that was draped across I-64 yesterday with those cells that produced the, the hail last night. Uh, it is just tilted a little more in a northeast fashion. So it's sort of attached to the main system, but sort of detached. It's just kind of 
a neighbor, if you will. But that's why it looks kind of weird. Uh, and then our marginal risk that you see painted for the rest of Indiana and in Louisville, it's because these outlooks do not expire until 7 a.m. So it is accounting for the showers and storms that will be severe in Missouri today. They will move eastbound. They will be weakening, but still can produce uh, a few cases of wind, maybe small hail, intense lightning. Uh, so therefore, it's a marginal risk to account for that. And the outlook stops near E-Town. It cuts off on the green because that's basically 7 a.m. It cuts off. And then I'll show you in a second the map for tomorrow begins to take over. That makes sense. These maps, are, again, are, you got to look at them as a time frame as much as they are on areas most impacted. The uh, the way they draw them tells you the times too, um, a storyline, if you will. So anyway, didn't want to get too deep into that idea. Main thing is it's going to be active out there for today. Tomorrow, our risk takes over. And yes, the risk today is, is different. Uh, yesterday, we had the slight risk that was all the way through Kentucky. We were actually the bullseye, really, of uh, the severe threat for this event for um, for Wednesday. Still looks to be an, an active day. Now, what is what has changed here? Well, uh, the slight risk up to the north makes sense because that's basically where you got your main low pressure. So you're going to get, you know, a good setup to get severe weather and some tornadoes closer to the spin of the big red L on the weather map, right? Moving from Chicago into southern areas of Michigan. Uh, the problem is the southern extent of that. And we were talking about this on the shows yesterday that, you know, it was odd. Uh, and even a lot of you weather enthusiasts have been paying attention. You know that there has been a, a ton of development on the modeling on the southern side of this as we head into Wednesday afternoon. Some models have it, some do. And the ones that do have it, have it forming more into East Kentucky, like a very much a big delay that happens to where nothing takes place. Not even a shower moves through here tomorrow afternoon after a round of loud rain and thunder the afternoon quiet. Um, is that the way to go with this? Not necessarily. Here's the problem that I think the models are having and will continue to have uh, until we get into tomorrow. We do have the morning round of rain that is going to be coming through. We're highly confident on that. Uh, the severe risk will be fading out. I'll show you the future cast on it in a second. Uh, this should still be ongoing, though, with some type of strong to severe weather. I don't know if this is going to really weaken overnight. It should stay just strong all the way through uh, into the day on Wednesday for areas of northern Indiana and Ohio. Um, we will have a batch of clouds roll through the area with the showers and the thunderstorms. They should feed out fairly quick. The problem is that this is not a typical cold front that is moving through here and kind of sweeping by and clearing the air out. Otherwise, I think it would be very likely we would have a, a slight risk all up and down the cold front, if not even a higher potential. Uh, but this is different. This low is moving by. The cold front portion of it actually is not moving as fast as the low is. So what happens is the cold front slows down, becomes a little sluggish, all the way down to about Memphis. Uh, so because it is slowing down, uh, it may also hold on to some of the cloud cover from the morning round of rain. So the ability for us to get back out into some sun and then try to get thunderstorms to redevelop is a very narrow window. We may very well bust out into some sunshine and you're like, oh, great, the sun's out. Where are the storms? Well, here's the problem is that the trigger for the storms may already be south and east of us straight down to the Tennessee. So the sun comes out, but the trigger is is gone. So we end up with a partly cloudy sky and no rain. Very, very quiet. This has huge, huge, and we don't like to say bust potential on them, but this kind of scenario can indeed do that. So why um, would then we even continue to talk about this? Well, here's the problem, is that not all the modeling is grasping the idea that there will be a tail portion of this that will indeed slow down enough. Some of the modeling still wants to keep the severe weather absolutely going across Illinois into, uh, or excuse me, Indiana and Ohio, but it also wants to develop small supercells right down into Louisville around three o'clock in the afternoon and then move them east. Not all models have that, but some do. And the atmosphere, that's the problem we've got, is the atmosphere can handle severe weather if there is something to trigger them, to get them to fire up. Otherwise, they're not going to really just do it on their own in this kind of a sense. Unlike yesterday, the heat built up the thunderstorms for hail last night. This is a little different. It needs a little bit of help. And if it doesn't have the help, then it's uh, going to remain relatively quiet. 
for now, our game plan is to keep the alert day going for this, especially since there still could be some cells that could uh, build down. Well, there's two reasons. One, there could be a warning or two tomorrow morning for mainly hail or isolated damaging wind. Uh, the storm tomorrow morning will not be as intense as what we normally would have in the afternoon, but they still, still can produce warnings. So don't be surprised if it's 3 o'clock in the morning and your weather radio goes off for a severe thunderstorm warning for wind and hail. Um, they typically are not big time damaging storms, but they can be annoying because you're going to get uh, not a whole lot of a uh, whole lot of sleep and be a bit noisy overnight tonight and early on Wednesday. Uh, so I still think we need to keep the uh, guard up on those moving through. And I still think that the data is not solid enough to completely ignore that there will not be any development down toward Kentucky. Uh, if every model said that it's pretty easy, right, to go with, OK, this is not going to happen and we'll just clear the. Uh, potential off altogether but there's a reason why the storm prediction center did not get rid of the marginal and that is because there's just not more questions on whether or not uh the morning rain will move out will clear and the second round will all be able to happen in the right window and it's a very tight window i'm talking three to five p.m is what it's got to work with if it doesn't happen within that window we're we're good we're out of that that zone. So that's good for you guys, right? I mean, that we don't want to deal with severe weather all night long and waiting for it all afternoon like we have in previous events. Certainly April 2nd, I felt like we were waiting all day for it to go, right? This one is going to be a relatively quick hitting as far as the decision making goes on if it's going to happen or not. So, and we still got more data to roll in here today and we'll analyze that. Okay, so that's where we stand on tomorrow. Still looking at a stormy night tonight. Again, most of it will not be severe. They'll just be loud, obnoxious, Lightning, rain, thunder, you get the idea. If the creeks are a little high in your neighborhood and your creeks in your street, your uh, house area, just pay extra attention to it. Uh, but as far as anything wild on severe weather, it's going to be relatively tame. Um, the big question will be just after lunch tomorrow, three about that three to five o'clock window, uh, will we see anything in a supercellular form pop on the radar or, or not? And we're going to know that answer very, very soon. So I appreciate you guys being patient with this as we analyze this we don't want to my biggest fear is is downgrading any kind of alert or alert day period and then we end up with two or three supercells that form at uh 4 15 tomorrow afternoon and, and start producing some uh some damage and everyone's thinking oh wait a minute the alert day was uh canceled this is over with i don't want you guys to get that impression either all right so we want to make sure we're careful with what we're saying uh but also letting you guys know that, yeah we see that the data trends are not as uh, aggressive as they were a couple of days ago. That is not anything I'm going to complain about. I hate severe weather, so I hope that the data trends for the rest of the day today continue to downplay this. And if you do hear us say, yes, we're taking out the alert day, that that's a positive sign for you all, that we've exhausted our men mentality part of it all of analyzing any potential solution and, and decided that it's safe. All right, so that is, again, tomorrow afternoon's question mark. But we got to deal with Thursday now. Why Thursday? Well, the front is, remember, stalled in the area. It's got that tail. So it, go, it moves fast across Illinois, Indiana, and Ohio, the northern part. So that's why the severe potential is a little more confident. They've got the forcing and the ability to get some uh, decent storms. But the southern piece is much more slow. So it lags on that. So that's why it's a lot more questionable on, on uh, severe storm potential. But here comes another low pressure that's going to move right in along that front into a Thursday afternoon, and it too can perhaps pr produce some severe weather. These can be sneaky when they roll in like this. So um, uh, we need to watch that. Uh, no alert day yet has been declared for uh, Thursday, but it has some potential. Uh, here is the, um, the AI from the Colorado State Learning Module. Let me show you full screen. This is for tomorrow. You see that it's got the green in the top, that is your tornado potential. Eh, we're barely in it into uh, northern Kentucky. There's a gap down in Tennessee. Most of, most of it, though, is in Ohio uh, in that area, um, Ohio into western PA. That's where the majority of it is. Your uh, potential for hail is elevated roughly. Well, it's got the black dot, which it indicates the max point potential, which is, looks like Lexington. So uh, northeast Kentucky and Ohio for hail. And damage winds, fairly similar on that idea. But notice it's not a wide signal as far as all over the place. 
And there are no reds. You know, on April 2nd, we had, uh, sp- especially for uh, wind potential and hail, we were getting up in the red category, uh, which is why we ended up with a moderate risk that day. Uh, these are all barely low end threats that we're, uh, that we're talking about. So this is good. And you can tell that the model, even the AI is struggling on what to do with Kentucky. Uh, it's much more confident on northern areas of Indiana and Ohio on the uh, severe part. That's tomorrow. Here's the outlook for uh, Thursday. Does not have a tornado output for us. That's good. Uh, it does have a uh, potential, at least for um, for hail. Back in the plains, we just now start to enter that side of the hail potential right over us, right onto central and west Kentucky. Same story on damaging winds. We're right on the edge of it. Just now approaches late in the period. So I do think it's something to uh, to watch with that. All right, let me show you some of the modeling. Let me bring that up. Um, I think you guys like looking at this stuff, right? I'll leave this full screen. This again, the red indicating the, your uh, your fuel, thunderstorm fuel. And uh, you can see where the fronts are. Here's your warm front from yesterday. And this is why there is that odd little area of marginal risk today located into Ohio and West Virginia. Uh, we do not have much in the way of Cape here into Kentucky, just clouds and spotty showers. We're kind of in the the uh, the warm sector here, if you will, this one. Uh, but plenty of fuel back into Missouri, right? Um, Illinois, Missouri. You can see why they've got the storm threat there that is going to be ongoing uh, for today. All right. That's uh, for five o'clock this afternoon. Overall, fairly, fairly quiet. Fairly quiet. Let's zoom ahead. We get into 1030 tonight. All right, now we're seeing the uh, thunderstorms roll out of Illinois into Missouri, into West Indiana, West Kentucky. Uh, as they do approach into the western part, the Boot Hill area, and the land between the lakes, they could still be severe. We'll need to watch that, in that portion of Kentucky, and even in pro- perhaps even not too far away from um, Terre Haute, Indiana. There could even be some uh, severe weather ongoing there. Either way, the storms get out of the fuel. Like we were showing yesterday, uh, the fuel is still around. To the west, but most of the storms have already moved ahead of it. So that's the reason why they become elevated and your damaging wind threat, your tornado threat, all that begins to get diminished uh, significantly. You end up with just a lot of heavy rain and lightning and messy for the morning drive tomorrow. So that hasn't changed a whole lot, but this is where things do change. We advance the clock as we get to four in the afternoon for your Wednesday. Here is your belt of concern when it comes to overlapping the fuel and the wind fields, your overall just severe risk, right? In that uh, red and gold area. And you can see the storms are ongoing still into now at this point, mainly all of Ohio, Northern Ohio, getting the severe weather into Michigan. And we've got the belt of severe concern that goes right along the Ohio River and uh, right to about Richmond, Kentucky. But there's no thunderstorms. There's some cumulus clouds that have formed in a dotted fashion, but no storms fire there. I advance it more, and in this particular model, they don't even fire at all. They just kind of crumble and fall apart. Uh, we don't have any more fuel at that point. All of it is trapped now in the southern part of the state. Uh, why is it stuck in the southern part of the state? Well, because it's a stalled front. You can already see what's happening. Thursday system is already wanted to say, hey, I see you guys got some fuel over there. I want some of that. So it begins to pull on it and pull it northbound. And that will happen as we head into Thursday. This is Thursday afternoon at three in the afternoon. You see what happens. The fuel gets brought back in. Then we get the thunderstorms and then thunderstorms at around 8 p.m. Thursday, right into wave country. So this is one model's idea, but when you look at that, you're thinking, um, Brian, that looks worse. <laughs> that looks worse than what Wednesday is. I agree. It's only one model right now. I got to look at a few more on the setup here for uh, for Thursday. But if that trend continues, yes, we're going to have to tag on Thursday as a, as an alert day. Uh, maybe, hopefully, the trade is that we can get we can take Wednesday out and just focus on Thursday. Wouldn't that be nice? Uh, either way, until we get a uh, a definitive front and push of cooler air to move in. We're not going to get out of this stormy pattern until sometime Thursday night into Friday. Before I go further, any questions I can try to answer on that. That's a lot. And I hope you guys understand that it's, uh, it's going to take us a while to kind of get all this all hashed out and get all the finer details worked out. So we'll communicate with you guys on social media and on the app as we get uh, more confidence in certain 
setups and timings uh, of the uh, different waves here between uh, Wednesday and, and Thursday and let you know if we need to move any alert day uh, set up there. Okay. Um, hey, Brian. Thank you. Appreciate that. Good morning. Uh, good morning, James. Hope all is well. Let's see. Susan, let's see. Get some traps and ferals tomorrow. Hoping the rain stays away. It does look like we'll have some rain around in the pre dawn hours for sure. Kathy, between the humidity and the barometer, I'm suffering here. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. Uh, and the humidity actually was uh, a little lower for a while yesterday, but certainly allergies are bad and uh, the pollen count's maxed out. So I get it. I get it. That time of the year. Mark, um, should we know more with the new data at 1230? Well, that's already starting to roll in. Uh, there's two key pieces. One we'll get at 1030, uh, excuse me, 1130. And I get another one at one. 45 p.m. Uh, is one I need to see as well. So there's a few that still have to come out, uh, but really it's going to be this evening before the ones to help answer the question on a Wednesday afternoon really will start to show the, uh, the idea better there. So good question. Um, I hate being at the mercy of models. I really do. It stresses me out. But when you got uh, so many systems lined up, you know, it's a little easier if you have one system you can track and you really gauge the, the conditions of the atmosphere just by looking at satellite and radar across the country. It's fairly easy uh, in meteorology on that idea. But when you've got a traffic jam that starts to develop, uh, well, you got to have the help of models because there's not much you can really do from sitting at a desk here. It, it really isn't. Um, we're going to get there. We're going to get there, though. Surely we're not going to get damaging weather just nonstop every week, right? Surely one of these, these got a bust. He's got a bust. I'm hopeful that, I mean, not that we want to be wrong, but, you know, we need a break, right? We don't want anything else. Okay. Um, Linda came in late. Any alerts for tonight? No alerts for tonight. Tomorrow morning does look like it's going to be more or less just a downplay of uh, heavy rain and thunder in the area. Maybe some peace ICL. You can't get a few warnings in that. I've seen it happen just because you can get some strong winds, but nothing major. Uh, Eric, the fee mon the fear mongering is getting old. These guys just use, just using every opportunity to get their face out. Uh, well, Eric, um, I don't know if you've seen my face lately, lately, but I, this is not a face you want to get out often. So, um, yeah, Eric, you don't know me. So I don't know why you felt you need to type that in there, but appreciate your comment. Anyway, you made it in the blog. All right, Adam, what was the record yesterday? It was 87 is the new record. It was the record high. 87 is the record high there. All right, so there you go. Uh, Eric gives you five minutes of fame. Yeah, right, he's got to have their five minutes. I'm sure Eric's fine. Maybe he's just having a bad day. Uh, you guys know for a long time, and I've been watching over 20 years, whatever, that uh, uh, I have not, my anxiety is too high to get into any type of fear mongering, right? I just want to talk about it. My biggest issue I have is I just want to make sure that I'm clear in my thoughts. And when I'm trying to explain, it's so hard to do on TV. I just want to explain everything I possibly can that's in my head that I'm seeing and questions that uh, could go one way or the other. I, I'm trying to also, you know, give you guys some hope that there's, there's a chance this could actually uh, be a, a more downplayed setup in some aspects of it. So that is always positive news. I'd love to share that. Uh, but we need to be on guard. Just be ready for um, the setup for Wednesday and, yeah, set up on Thursday. I'm going to look over that data now uh, that's rolling in, and I will be with you guys coming up on midday. And let's hope uh, that we have a uh, nearly the same type of look where everything's falling apart. That would be really, really nice. All right. Have a good one, guys. Enjoy it outside. Take the allergy meds. You know the drill. And I'll see you guys coming up on midday at a 11 a.m. All right. See you then, guys. Take care.